Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, I just got this new external antenna in from T-Mobile. Now this is available for you to order online and it pairs with their new gateway here that has its own external antenna ports, unlike their, their previous ones. Ultimately the speed is what I care the most about. All right, well, that is a pretty simple answer there. 50% faster on the download. They finally have listened where they gave us a gateway with these other ports. I have other videos on how I got this um, and actually I have videos on these connectors as well. These are 90 degree connectors I put on there to put the waveform 4x4 antenna on there, but they just released their own 4x4 antenna and I want to test that out. So in this video, I will go through what this is, what details I know about it as far as this gain and what frequency it does. We'll obviously install it on this. We're gonna compare the stock unit without the external antenna. We'll put the antenna on there, probably in a couple different places to give you a kind of a read of how it might perform at your place. And then of course, comparing it to the waveform four by four in the same place so that you have a baseline. So first off, let me just show you what's in this box here. I've already opened it up as you can kind of tell but let's just open it up and show you what is in there. Okay, so here is the antenna. Now it comes wrapped up with the cable around it. As you can tell, it does have a cable included with it. In fact, it's hardwired, so you can't um, you know, take this cable away. You could obviously add more cabling to it if you wanted to, or you could just use this SMA connector and get an extension, I think. All right, actually, I'll say the cable is probably more like six to seven feet of total length. And then, you know, it's definitely much smaller than the Waveform 4x4 um, by a large margin. Uh, that might be a great thing for you, though, if you're trying to put this inside. And what this comes with, they call this a multi-mount. And that's because it can actually do three different mounting styles. One is a pole mount. So this is actually designed for a pole to go in there. And then you put zip ties through these uh, rectangle holes here. Uh, but what it comes with is suction cups. So these slide into these... Um, these four holes on each side, and then that goes on the inside of a window, not outside your house by any means. But that said, I did some digging to try to figure out more about this antenna, and that's what I want to show you because um, T-Mobile does not give you a whole lot of information with it, actually. They give you a quick start guide. It basically just says, uh, put the suction cups on, stick it on the window, and um, then go in here to your settings to enable external antenna, and you're good. It doesn't give you any information about aiming, other details about this itself so one interesting thing that I looked at was trying to figure out some more details of this device itself is who makes it right because T-Mobile obviously doesn't make these antennas or these gateways for that matter all right now there is actually one more piece they do include in the box and that's this guy I didn't know what it was at first but I did read the instructions and it's actually a wrench so you can go in here and slide onto your connectors here and tighten them and that's because the way that this unit is made these connectors are kind of hard to get to and so this allows you to get to them from out here and you're clear of the actual housing itself. Now I put these 90 degree connectors on so I actually don't have that problem. I can get to them out here. But um, you know, if you don't wanna buy those connectors, you can get this instead. So it has some lettering on the cabling here itself. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it, but it's uh, Tao Gloss, maybe is the name. Um, and it says that it's low loss cable. So I did some searching on the actual brain and I did find out some informa information so that's what I want to show you here on my tablet is just what does this antenna make up and maybe how does it compare to something like the waveform one. So let's go in here to my tablet and show you what I'm talking about as far as what I found out about it. Now when I went on the website I was trying to dig through their different antennas I found one that's very similar in shape and size of this one but it is different because it is a thicker unit there. So I'm not exactly sure what's different there, but I'm using that kind of as a reference for um, what there is. I did see some um, call out, uh, I forget where it was, I couldn't find it, but that it's about a 4 dB gain. So I wanted to get um, some reference here with this one as well. All right, so again, this is not a perfect example, but I wanted to get an idea of how their stuff works. I think this one is a slightly different antenna than this one. Uh, but like I said, from a um, uh, square size, it's roughly the same. This one's just uh, thinner there. And so you can go through here. It tells you about the unit, um, that it is a omnidirectional one, but it does have a pivot to it so that you can get what they call optimal performance. So 
That tells me it's maybe not exactly omnidirectional, but we'll get into that here in a second. It does mention it's IP67 rated, which means it can go outdoors. The only thing they say is not rated for outdoors is the suction cup. So you have to use the pole mount, or you can all optionally also just screw it direct to a wall. All right, so if we look at some specifications here, it does have the antenna gain and efficiencies rated here. And so for this one, you can look through the different bands. This does mention it also goes from 430 megahertz up to about 6,000. So that more than covers all of T-Mobile's main bands there. Their lowest one is really uh, the N71 down at about 617. And then their N41 for their 5G ultra capacity is around 2,500. So this one is well tuned to meet those demands. And if you look at it on average, it's about four. Some of their uh, bands are a little bit lower. Some of them are a little bit higher. In fact, if you look at N71 and N41, those ones tend to be on the higher side, so even closer to 5 dB gain. So that's roughly what you're getting out of this unit. Now, if I were to compare that real fast to Waveform, they claim their antenna is about 11 dB. But if you look at the spec sheets there, you know it, it, all these antennas very based off the actual frequency. If I scroll down here, I'll show you what I mean by that here. This chart here is um, the type of charts that you'll see when they do these testings for what type of gain they get, and it varies by frequency. So on the waveform one, I think it can vary, you know, 7, 8, 9 uh, dB, depending on the frequency, but um, roughly double what this one is, um, is mentioned at. All right, the next thing I'm interested in is how omnidirectional is this? So again, I'm using this other one as a reference, but it does appear to be very omnidirectional, actually impressively omnidirectional from um, most of these plots. It, uh, you can see here this orange, it looks like, a, like literally an orange sphere. That's the sphere of the uh, pattern for that um, antenna. You see a couple places here where it is you know, sucked in. Um, so that's probably where, if you don't get the best signal, you might want to play with it, moving it a few degrees. And if you're in one of these little um, these little lobes or lumps, you can um, possibly get out of it. But overall, going through this, it does appear to be pretty omnidirectional. Uh, so it shouldn't be super sensitive to the angle that it's placed. All right, so I will put links to um, those data sheets that I found as well as some installation instructions that they have um, for that separate from T-Mobile. But let's go upstairs and test this unit out as a baseline, and then we'll add the antenna and the waveform to see how it performs. All right, so here we are. We have just the stock G4AR gateway using the internal antenna. And we're just doing this for a baseline here so we can see what we get here. So we can see we're on B2. Now you can see in the bottom there is the omnidirectional, which means the internal antenna. And we can see here our um, values for the 4G. And over here we can see our values for our 5G N41. Um, and then let's go in here to do a speed test. All right, so this is the stock G4AR. And we're letting speedtest.net find its optimal um, server to go to and then we'll just see what it does all right so now i'm going to go into the gateway itself i go on the screen and just scroll over to antenna click change click external and now i'm switching it over to a external antenna all right so that is now set let's go back into the t-mobile app here and have it refresh these metrics so you can see it switched to external you can see my signal to noise actually went down so worse my rsrp also went higher i believe and then here make sure this one is updated um, i forget all these numbers that rsrp i think was 100 before as well so i didn't see um any great changes there really but let's see what it does for my speed test let's have it go again All right, certainly not a improvement there. I can try to rotate this to see if I can make it uh, better, but right now is not a big one. Let's just, I just rotated it uh, several degrees. Let me just see if that makes a difference on our speed here. All 
All right, nothing really great in here. The, that upload loaded ping is terrible. Uh, let me go back into the app here and see what that rotation did for my signal. Looks like that N41 got slightly better. I think this one's actually slightly worse. So right now the antenna, let me go back to the stock one and just make sure um, I do apples to apples to make sure that this is not that different. I mean, this is obviously only about four feet away. Um, so the location is not greatly different. It is in the window instead of on the cabling itself. But uh, you can't get very far with just six feet of cabling. All right, so not seeing a huge change there on the um, the 4G. The 5, 5G gets better with the internal, at least on these cell metrics here. So let's rerun the same test here and just make sure I didn't get a fluke on the first one. Nope. Straight back up to the 200 mark. All right, so these numbers are from the internal antenna. I just put the waveform 4x4 on there, and so I just switched there and updated these numbers. And so I'm seeing roughly the same for the 5G. My 4G, I think it's roughly the same. I'm not seeing a huge difference there again on, um, on these for um, the 4x4 either, but let's go in there and check what the... Um, speed test shows ultimately the speed is what I care the most about. All right, well, that is a pretty simple answer there 50% faster on the download and about 10 times faster on the upload with the waveform versus the stock. And that's actually faster than the T Mobile extra antenna. Now, let me bring the T Mobile just to be fair here, let's bring the T Mobile antenna out. To where the waveform is uh, to do that i'm going to have to run extension cord out there to the attic space as well but just to try to put the antenna in the same area as the um the waveform that way at least we can say well if you put this antenna in the same place does it help you all right so here is the setup i just tested you can see the t-mobile antenna it's unplugged there and then i do have the G4AR with its external antenna hooked up right now to the waveform, which goes over here uh, through the wall into the attic space. So it's only, that's the stock 30 foot cable from waveform. So I'm no more than 30 feet away, but we're gonna move this antenna over across into here where we get into the attic space. You can see this cabling coming out of the wall there. It goes up over here. And then it's in the attic space. So I'm going to move that T-Mobile antenna over to here and we'll run a test again. Up in the attic now and I have my G4AR on the floor with the external antenna hooked up. But I'm on the internals right now. So you can see my RSRQ is about minus 10 for uh, B2. And then for N41, I'm also minus 10 with a signal noise about 20. So let's do a speed test and see where we get with that. All right, so if we remember the baseline was about 200 down and 10 up. So this certainly got an improvement for the stock unit, just moving the stock unit out here. It's a couple more um, walls removed, um, so it's better for the signal, but it is not up to where the waveform was. So let's switch to the external antenna and see what that does for us. All right, so I switched over to the external antenna. Let's see what happens here to the signal. It looks like the uh, signal metrics really didn't change much there. And how about for the 4G? In fact, the signal to noise got worse on 4G. So let's run the speed test and see what it gives us. All right, let's talk about this. All right, so I did a few other tests uh, kind of off camera as well just to verify my stuff. Obviously, this is not fully extensive or scientific by any means, but, you know, I got a very good idea of how this is performing. And it was very consistent, at least relative to the stock gateway in that it really did not give me any improvements when it was in the same place as the gateway. Now, 
the benefit I've seen of antennas using all my waveform testing or my other antennas as well is really the one of the main benefits is you can get them where the signal is at. And so that is very true for this one as well with the caveat that you are restricted to this very short cable length. So I really can't come up with that many scenarios where a user would get this antenna as it sits and show a drastic difference in performance unless you were moving this unit to outside or perhaps like an attic space um, you know but again with a short cable you're gonna have to have your gateway up high on the wall or something to get it out into the attic um, so I don't really see the point of this antenna to be frank with you I don't want to uh, bash T-Mobile for trying to come out with it because we've been asking for years for them to come out with a external antenna but sadly, I can't really say I recommend this to anyone, especially if your plan is to take this and stick it on a window that's within six feet of your gateway. I just don't think you're going to be happy with the performance improvement that you get out of this. Um, and it's not that necessarily it's a terrible antenna. It's just that moving it six feet to a window is not really going to help you that much. Why don't you just move the gateway to the window and just deal with it sticking in the gateway rather than have this uh, cabling there. So that's my thought. If you want the better performance, that tried and true waveform 4x4 is the one I go to bar none. I one I always have hooked up to my house um, up there and that one gives me the same consistent performance. It's the only one that gives me that massive upload speed. If we compare it to the stock uh, G4AR, you know, it's roughly 50% faster in download and I think it was four times faster in upload. So those are, and my upload is something I really love because I upload YouTube videos and getting that four times faster is fantastic. And this same unit, when it was out there, it did get a improvement from where it was on the inside, but it tested almost exactly the same as the actual gateway out there in the attic. So again, I don't see the, um, the real point of this. I wouldn't recommend running this one through the wall because the cabling is lower quality. So if you're going to go through that effort, you might as well get a higher quality cable and you might as well get a bigger antenna. That's really going to give you a drastic change in your performance. So, you know, for this, if you want to get better signal, I would put the gateway wherever it gets it or again, splurge for the waveform or one of these other well-known brands out there with the higher quality cables. That's how you're going to be uh, the happiest. Now, the other thing you can also look into is these third-party gateways. I've covered them everywhere from Peplink, Chester Tech Repair. You know, there's many different options out there, but those give you the capabilities for band locking, uh, 5G SA, and some other things that um, the stock gateways don't allow you to do. So check out my channel for more of that content if you want to see it. If you have any questions about this specific antenna or the testing that I did in this video, please do put it in the comments down below. I do read those and try to get back to them. And then let's see what else I come up with for my next video. Thanks.